Hello and welcome. Today we are going to discuss about part 3 of most important topic of geomorphology for NTVGC net and all such exam. That is evolution of geomorphological thought. I have already made two videos about the introductions and ancient periods, dark age, age of catastrophism, age of uniformitarianism, modern age, 19th century. Today we will discuss about modern age 19th century first half. The beginning of 20th century, the methodological revolution, metholo methodological revolutions in geomorphological studies brought by W. M. Davis and his followers at home, that is USA and abroad in German by W. Penck in Germany. Davis classical model of geomorphological cycle was propounded in 1899 and defined by him as a period of time during which an uplifted land masses undergoes its transformation transformation by process of land, land sculpture ending into a low featureless plan as he term as penny plan dominated throughout the first half of 20th century in spite of the steep opposition by W. Penck and others in Germany. His model of geometrical cycle was variously termed, popularized and applied by his followers all over. Example, normal cycle, erosion cycle, geomorphic cycle, humid cycle. His Geographical cycle does not represent his general theory of landscape development as his general theory of landscape development is that, that there is sequential changes in landform through successive stages and changes are directed toward a definite end that is at end of featureless plan. He was termed as penny plan. Davis also identified three basic factors which control the evolution of landform. Landscape is a function of structure, process, and time, which are termed as trio of Davis. His concept of geomorphological cycle was later on applied with all other other than fluvial process by Davis and his followers. Example, arid cycle erosion by Davis 1903-1905 and 1930. Glacial cycle of erosion by Davis 1900 and 1906. Marine cycle erosion by Davis 1912. D.W. Johnson 1919. Car cycle of erosion by Dede 1919, Jivik 1918, Periglacial Cycle of Erosion by L. C. Petlier in 1950. His model was modified by few geomorphologists after 1950. Davis' concept of historical evolution landscape became the pivot for the classical concept of denudation, chronology, and erosion surfaced in UK. Davis' major contributions like the research article, paper, and addresses were published in book form that is Ge Geographical Essay in 1909. The American School of Geomorphology was further enriched by the significant contributions of host geomorphologists, example, D. W. Johnson, Marine Process and Coastal Geomorphology, C. A. Mallet, Fluvial Process and Erosion, H. M. A. Merritt and E. W. Olmsted, Evolution of Appalachian in Appalachian Renest, R. F. Surf, A. K. Lovek, D. W. Thornberry. During the first half of the 20th century, European School of Geomorphology made significant contributions in the advancement of geomorphological thoughts. British geomorphologists met their independent identity and there emerged an entirely different school of geomorphology, which led emphasis on chronological studies of landscape development in historical perspective. Its 
known as denudation chronology based on the concept of Palmsest. S. W. Woolrich, his famous book Physical Basis of Geography and Outline of Geomorphology, published in 1937. J. A. Steer, The Unstable Art, published in 1832. Met in the con met contributions in the different branch of geomorphology. The Debussian model of Jamarpala cycle met strong criticisms and his concept rapid and erosionless upliftment became the crux of criticism by opponents of cycle concept of evolution of landform, particularly by the German geoscientists. The critics of Jamar, uh, Jam, the German critics of Debussian Debis, model fall into two categories. First, Category opponent pleaded for outright reject, rejection of cy cyclic concept, while the second category of critics suggested for the modification and presented entirely new model. According to Peng, landform development is not time dependent and misses by Davis, rather, it is time independent. W. Peng, through his morphological analysis and morphological system, tried to reconstruct and interpret the first events of crustal movement on the basis of exogenetic process and morphological characteristics. The Peng's model of landscape development is that characteristic of landform of a given region R related to the tectonic activity of that region. According to Fang, landform development should be interpreted by means of ratio between dystrophic process and erosional process. In the Davis stages, he used the term enwickling in the place of development and in the place of youth, mature and old stage he used the term abstagenda and weklang, it means the waxing or accelerated rate of development, glaphormic and weklang, uniform rate or development, and abstagenda and weklang in waning or decelerating rate of development. A new branch of geomorphology in the form of climatic geomorphology was developed in France and Germany and German on the basic tenet that each climatic type produced its own characteristic assemblies of landforms. Shower in 1925, Wenworth 1928, Sefer 1935, Prezes 1935 and postulate the concept of climatic geomorphology and morphogenetic or morphoclimatic reasons by Budel in 1944-1948 and L. C. Petlier in 1950 in Germany. This concept of climatic geomorphology was further advanced and established by Trekkert and colleagues in France. In the second half of 20th century. The statistical techniques were first introduced by Krumbe in geology in 1930s. The American engineers R. E. Horton in 1932 and 1945 brought quantitative revolutions in the field of geomorphology as he presented quantitative analysis of geomorph geomorphic characteristic of pluvial originated drainage basin. At the time of 1950, when majority of geomorphologists all over became fed up with 
evolutionary model of Davis and fleeted for alternative theory of landscape development, which may envisage time independent series of landform. Petlier presented the concept of periglacial cycle of erosion in 1950 in Germany, which offers support to Davis model cycle of erosion. Recent trends, the second half of 20th century. Post-1950, geomorphology has undergoes sea changes in the methods and approach to study of landform, conceptual framework, paradigm, trust area of studies. Recent trend in the field of geomorphological studies since 1950 include increasing criticism of Davis model of cycle development of landform, concerted effort for the replacement of cyclic model by non-cyclic model, descriptive model, qualitative treatment of landform by quantitative geomorphology, inductive methods of landform analysis by deductive method, introductions of models and system approach, emergence of process geomorphology, climatic geomorphology, shift from larger spatial and longer temporal scale to smaller spatial and shorter temporal scale. The decade of 1950 and 60 was devoted for more quantitative study of landform and process. This is reason that a set of basic concepts of landscape cycle, epigen cycle, pediplanation cycle, hill slope cycle was postulated by L.C. King and his canon of landscape published in 1953 could not win support. The rejection of Davis, Davisian concept of cycle model based on the time-dependent landform evolution culminated in the postulation of dynamic equilibrium theory landscape development by J.T. Hawk, R.J. Chorle, and others. Based on the concept of time-independent evolution of landscape and system concept. Recently, few alternative geomorphic threshold model, tectonic geomorphic model by M. Morishawa, episodic erosion model by S. A. Chum. This period is the adoption of quantitative approach based on the deductive scientific methods to the study of landforms and forces at the short spatial and temporal scales. The mega and measure scale used for landscape uh, landform studies have been reduced to micro scale. The mechanism of process can be properly understood through the field instrument and measure of mode and rate of operation of geomorphic process. Thus, form geomorphology has been replaced by process of geomorphology. This quantitative approach resulted in the formulation of functional theory of landscape development. <laughs>